Alright, hello and welcome everyone to the first Why Would You Use that we've had in a while. But, this is an emergency Why Would You Use because this weapon is only available for a limited time and I hopefully can catch enough people before they are locked into their choice for the week. That is not this. This is the Strun Prime with its brand new Incarnan that is available this week from the Steel Path Circuit in Duviri. This weapon, I would not be surprised... If it is the best Incarnan we see of the initial lot of Incarnans we have to choose from, because it is extremely, extremely good. It is very competitive for being one of the best weapons in the game. So, wanted to catch you guys as early as I could in the week here. Uh, with that, so the Strun Prime... Traditionally, it has been a fine shotgun, and it remains at least a fine shotgun, but with the incarnate form, which we'll get to in a second, uh, and also the choice we've made here, which is Evolution 2, I get uh, plus 2 damage. There's You get more if you have the in the uh, the Wraith, or the Strun Wraith, but the Strun Prime has so much more base damage that I still would go with it over going for the Wraith. Uh, then you get 5% multi-shot on fire, stacks up to 5 times, you get more multi-shot the more you shoot, which is great. Uh, and then we get plus 60% reload speed. This is incredibly helpful uh, because this is a one shell at a time reload. So you'll re reload actually very quickly with this. Uh, it is worth noting that on Evolution 3, if you happen to be a Warframe that is going to do a lot of electric procs, uh, there is a second choice in here that is good, which gives you, I think it's a 40% chance to uh, add shells to your ammo uh, whenever you inflict electric procs. So if you're like Geyer and you're going to be using the Strun Prime a bunch, that's probably a good way to go because it'll basically just keep your magazine always full and you're, you're never going to have to reload. So they effectively do kind of the same thing, but one's a bit more situational and better in those situations. Uh, and then for the last evolution, we have status chance by 11.3%. There are some other choices for this, but the status chance one is pretty crazy because this does increase it for every single pellet that you are firing, uh, which with the incarnate mode <clears throat> becomes a little crazy. But... For this, uh, our general look at this, so we have 72% crit chance, which is very solid, 4.6 uh, crit multiplier, and 54% status per projectile, and we are getting a 25 and a little change, and that's before our galvanized and before our evolution 2 uh, multi-shot pellets. So that's a ton of statuses to be kicking out just as a baseline, and of course with the crit, this is a hunter munitions weapon, but it also has its incarnate mode, and its incarnate mode, we're using this build, and this build is, you know, not insane investment, honestly. It's only three forma, uh, which is not too bad. But there are there are a lot of galvanized mods and stuff in here. But the important things to note whenever we're looking at this is that if we scroll down to the incarnate mode, <clears throat> uh, it has a hundred and forty four percent critical chance with a seven point one multiplier and has five hundred and forty six percent status. Also, it has a radial attack that explodes. So that's pretty good. That's uh, it's pretty strong. It is uh, yeah, it's uh, it's up there in terms of how good it is. Uh, and pretty pretty standard build. Otherwise, we're on viral heat and all that good business. We're on merciless, which the reload speed on top of this gives us a total of plus a ninety percent reload speed. So we reload very fast, getting damage per kill. Uh, savvy. I will note this weapon is so good that we're using like the five hundred percent status and we're going to get at least five statuses so that is going to normally give us at least a count of like absolute worst case scenario pretty much we're going to get at least a count of three for this which is over like what is that like 240 percent um additional damage on our second shot the whole thing though uh you don't usually get to the second shot the second shot is uh pretty pretty usually really unnecessary like massive overkill completely not needed uh, if the enemy even does survive the, the first shot, and it's just raw damage capacity, not counting all the statuses it's going to apply. Uh, so it's pretty good. This is unnecessary. Uh, a galvanized acceleration, worth noting, uh, is very, very convenient, especially when you're using the main mode, just for that extra range, so that you can just, like, you know, just get better fall off. If anyone, if anyone doesn't know, um, the projectile speed increase actually makes it so that your fall off is better for shotgun weapons, which is the place where it's usually notable. It actually does it for all weapons. Uh, so this is actually really nice for making it so that damage can carry a bit further, uh, which is convenient. But yeah, uh, I'm just gonna we're just gonna show what this does because it is, um, it is like a much stronger semi-automatic opticore. 
Also, uh, it has a hard time charging on weak enemies, which is worth noting. But on strong enemies that can take a headshot, you do get credit for, like, all of the pellets, basically. Yeah. But that person's dead. Bang. 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 Hey, you over there. Are you dead? Yep. Bang. You're dead. Bang. Bang. Yeah. I mean, so it, I mean, it's pretty good. I have 18 more shots on the Incarnate form. Uh, whenever you get a full charge, it's 40 shots. Uh, y yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good at turning enemies into a fine red mist. Yeah, it's just uh, just sweet. Also for the reload, I'll dump mag here so you can see how fast it is, which is because it's, it's a really good consideration. Pretty fast reload. Also, you can of course like reload one shell at a time, and like doing that between shots is it wouldn't even be that bad. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's uh, it, yeah, yeah, it uh, demolishes the steel path. Uh, acolytes just die. Um, it's fantastic the one thing uh we did try because this was such a good weapon it was worth a sh it was worth a shot uh we did try this on the archons it does okay it's like fine for doing archons uh but it doesn't do like the fell arcs or the kuva heck like one shot stuff uh but it definitely is like reasonable for like chunking through the archon although you'll mostly use just like the regular form uh because the multi-shot helps there so yeah, worth noting. Not not like an not like an archon weapon. It's not that crazy, along with everything else it does. But it is incredibly aggressively good. Uh, enjoy the steel path run. Uh, I will note, I don't even take the steel path run to ten minutes, as it would legitimately be a waste of your time. You can entire you will get the full scope of this weapon's capabilities just from the first like the first five. You're gonna be just fine. You'll get it. I am confident. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, Strun, Strun Prime, uh, here it is, uh, seems to be one of the best weapons in the game, and that rules, hopefully you chose it this week, uh, and enjoy, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the Steel Path run, and I will see you tomorrow to talk about the bow, which is not as good. Time for War Crimes, time for War Crimes. Oh man, just time for nonsense. Yeah, this weapon is, uh, man. It's really insanely good. I mean, I don't even really need to say it. You could see it in the simulacrum. Like, you can probably surmise what it's going to be doing here. Full charge, let the mayhem begin. I will not be using Roar. Well, maybe I will a little bit, but I clearly won't need to. And Roar is actually kind of a downside, uh, because if your main fire kills them faster, it means it's actually a little harder to charge the uh, Incarnate fire. Uh, it's worth noting this is an explosion. Uh, so if you do not have, like, Prime Sure Footed or some other way to resist knockdowns, you will be knocking yourself down. So that That is notable. You could also just fire it, like, slightly further away from yourself. You can see the super fast reload because of the Incarnate choice that we made. There is also another interesting Incarnate on this. Uh, instead of the reload, you can choose that whenever you inflict Electricity Prox, it has a chance to add ammo to the reserve. Um, and that's pretty interesting. I think that electricity procs are a little on the weak side um, for building around, so I probably wouldn't go for it, but I do think that uh, if you are a frame that's going to inflict electric procs anyway, like Geyer, and you're going to play her all the time, it's a consideration to go for that just so you never have to reload, because it does work off of uh, things that are not the Strun uh, inflicting electric procs as far as I know. Oops, you need to recharge. 
Give it a reload before I go back into mode. Yeah, this thing is... Yeah, I mean, it, it's the red mist beam. It is turning enemies into a fine powder whenever you shoot them with it. It is really, really good. Like, it is... Um, it is a weapon that is immediately, like, in, in in my mind, I'm immediately considering this to be like, oh, how is this compared to the, the Kubazar? Like, is this up there or or, or not? Because, uh, especially considering it has, like, a very good ammo economy, which helps it considerably, like, this is a fantastic weapon. Oh, hello, Perrin. Here's all parent dudes. Yeah, this thing is just, just incredible. I, I, there's not even much. There's not much to say. Like, turns out shooting a beam of dye that explodes and kills. It, I mean, it's good, especially when you can fire a lot of it. Um, and charging the incarnate is good and easy. So like. It's just, just super solid. Yeah, there we go. Charged up. Yeah, just some like well placed shots at head level into a crowd is uh, plenty. Yeah, and it like yeah, it has like just enough raw to get through Eximus quickly and like be good against enemies that aren't super vulnerable to status, while also having the status. That makes it so that it can chew through enemies really quickly and you can like mostly kind of like fire and forget them uh because you can just like shoot once and then the slash procs will take care of the rest if you just wait like a moment um which is always really good like you always love to see that play pattern on enemies because it means that you can like kind of differentiate like the way that you're using the gun um and makes it kind of overall more efficient for you to play that way but yeah it's it's good it's it's good yeah, there is, uh, I mean, I don't think that there is even a question about whether or not this is a good gun now. I think it's just that it, like, objective fact. I cannot imagine someone being like, oh, that's not good enough. It is, yeah. Also, I will say, I will say I feel bad for, um, anyone that, uh, is not picking this this week and is going to have to wait like a month before it comes back around again because we do know the incarnate schedule um that being said i didn't pick the latron this week so i'm gonna be sad about that no violence is here toughest uh, acolyte and it's not close but he's dead now Anyway, yeah, you know, honestly, guys, I'm going to call it. I don't, I don't, I honestly, I really honestly believe it. you guys do not need to see the other five minutes of me obliterating these enemies. Like if you need to see more of me obliterating these enemies, I was doing it for like a half hour straight. Uh, on stream yesterday so go check out the twitch but we're gonna we're, we're gonna head out because I, I mean i don't know i don't think y'all need to see anymore i think it's pretty obvious what the performance of this weapon is uh at this point like one acolyte in i, th I think it's pretty clear that this is a melt ray that this does not this does not care about enemies like pretty much at all like heavy eximus like who i don't know them it just it just chews through it. It just chews through everything. Uh, is it next it this way? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's just uh just insane. <laughs> why? Why would it tell me to go this way? Or whenever? Why would the other way rather? Waypoints. Why you do this? Here we go. But yeah, just uh, just cracked, just incredibly good. 
obviously super high investment coming from steel path circuit and everything like that but uh just amazing just amazing just fantastic uh, i will leave you all with the advice to not pick the bow because it is underwhelming if you're making your other incarnate choice you should definitely choose the strun and probably not choose the bow but uh yeah that's gonna do it hopefully y'all have enjoyed the video and hopefully y'all y'all pick the strun because it's uh it is an experience all right everybody welcome to post duviri month and thank you to all of the new and returning patrons there are a lot of them and it is hugely appreciated for the support but we have our ten dollar patrons alex parnum arbiter daydream Bruta salazar dylan dworski ethrain hafan iq is thick James Harsthorn, JC for Science, Jesse Richens, Joshua Adams, Lou Zamp, Alec X Williams, Minty Ginja, Mitchta, Paradise, Amirelic Wastelander, Zach Zayner, and Zerafir to thank especially. But thank you very much to all of the new patrons and everybody that has jumped on board since like Duviri in this last month. It is hugely appreciated and really helps me run um, the site and just like get a lot of stuff done and get a lot of guides out. This month, you can expect me to hit up as many of the Incarnans as I can possibly get my hands on um because that is uh gonna gonna be a big focus here as we see that new stuff uh and of course work on more guides and things with the free to play through coming back around and all that yeah thanks everyone <laughs>